Let's see, how do we start this video? I think this video starts with me wasting seven hours chasing details related to our waterproof membrane. The summation is everybody has a different opinion about how to waterproof a foundation. Henry, which is a company who makes the blue skin membrane, specifies five different products that you use. And it is my fault that we did not do more research before we applied this membrane. But apparently you're supposed to prime everything with an adhesive. It was never mentioned anywhere, not from the people who sold it to us, which I'm not passing the buck, I'm just saying, it's never mentioned. You're supposed to put a fillet, which is a little chamfer, at the footing to wall connection because the membrane does not want to tuck into that corner. It wants to gap the corner, just like everything that's sheet related, like contact paper. You're supposed to use some sort of sealant on the edges, terminations, corners, etc., overlaps. Funny, you can't find any of these products at the places that sell the membrane. And it just so happens we happen to run into a local builder who I know builds with ICFs and does basements. I asked him what he did. He said, sometimes I just use patches of membrane and I use that to seal the corners and good enough. So I spoke with Henry, the company that makes the membrane, and they only offer one product that they recommend for the membrane. Can't find that product anywhere. Somehow, the only place I could find that product is walmart.com. Alyssa and I have spent over an hour in this heat, looking at our work, trying to wrap our heads around whether or not our basement's gonna leak. At this point, we have a pretty rough situation. We either cut the membrane we've already put on at the footing or, and wall joint, put in a fillet, and then put on an additional layer of membrane. Total cost, $300, which for the cost of this home and the effort, it's cheap. We're also not getting the best contact or adhesion between the concrete and the membrane at the footing, on the vertical face of the footing, ironically. But apparently, most people don't do that, and a lot of yeah. these companies don't even recommend it. So the building code says from the top of the footing to the top of the grade. Fine. Henry says you should go down the footing four inches on the vertical surface. So basically, there's about a million different opinions on how one should wrap one's foundation. All I care is, is it gonna leak? So Alyssa and I have been scratching our heads, making phone calls, and trying to find the answer. We don't know that there is an answer. It's more a matter of what you decide is good for you. We did talk to Lightform. Casey was very helpful. He offered quite a few suggestions because they obviously work with Lightform. Turns out one of the biggest struggles of ICFs is that the number of products that are not compatible with foam. So even if we could find some of these sealant products, etc., they don't work with the foam. I even found a couple of caulking products which are rated for the application that we need to, to do. But after talking with the company's technical support, you're not allowed to use them on foam because they will eat the foam. So we have found ourselves in quite the predicament and this is not an ICF problem. This has nothing to do with ICFs. Anyway, so here's where we found ourselves. We've spent a little time double checking the membrane, kind of looking over our work that we did last night in the dark, and we feel pretty good about it. We feel like it adhered well to the wall. It adhered pretty good to the footing, and it adhered okay to the face of the footing. We feel like when we overlap the additional membrane, that lower part of the membrane should be okay. So, we also, have found in our research that you must protect the membrane. Another thing was never mentioned to us and nobody seems to carry the product. Both companies that we're using membranes from, both Polyguard and Henry, both require some sort of drainage composite to protect the membrane from backfill. Because if you throw a bunch of rock in there and it punctures the membrane, well, there goes your membrane. So because we already have to protect the membrane anyway, we've come to the conclusion that our membrane is probably fine. We don't feel like it's okay, we're not sure. It's good, it's as good as anybody else. It's as good as the code requires. The only other option would be to wrap our entire house in a balloon and live in a bubble. This is a rant, but this is also reality. So we thought we'd start this video, unfortunately, with a bit of a rant because right now I'm actually almost nine hours into today. And I've, yeah, this this is the hardest part of building a house mm -hmm. is that like yet another day has gone by and we feel like we haven't done anything. We've yep. made no physical progress yep. and the littlest things become roadblocks. And I've asked a lot of people who have different backgrounds what they would do. And at the hardware store, I got a lot of, well, what I would do is this or what I would do is that or oh, I would never do that. I'd do this, I'd do that. 
And at the end of the day, it's our house. We have to build a home that we are happy with. And none of those answers satisfied me. Even the companies who offer this product weren't able to provide me with what I would call a suitable solution. We talked about asphalting the footing with some sort of a roof patch up underneath the membrane. But at this point, removing the membrane would very likely do more damage to the membrane than leaving it. After all, it's not the asphalt that creates the seal, it's the membrane that creates the seal. The asphalt's nothing more than an adhesive. While talking to our contractor friend, he said, oh, by the way, don't use the rolly up corrugated drain pipe. It crushes under the weight of backfill, to which I went, hmm? oh crap, <laughs> that's the stuff that we have. That we so, didn't install yet. That we haven't somehow we haven't by the tags maybe of. by luck. Maybe that was maybe that's why we haven't figured this out because he was supposed to tell us exactly. not to install that. What we've decided to do is spend the afternoon returning the drainage pipe and acquiring hard pipe or rigid pipe to apply to our drainage system. We're going to cut some patches in the membrane to fix some of the areas like the corners and things where we've got kind of a origami type situation going on. And then we should be in a position to move forward with installing our drainage. I don't think the drainage is going to get started today. It's too late. It's too hot. But if we can get this waterproofing under control, it'll be a good place to be. This heat is making Alyssa feel mood challenged to be politically correct. <laughs> you know what's funny is it smelled like laundry soap out here for the Ooh, longest time. And it's you know the what it toilet. Is? No, it's this. Really? Smell Hold on. Ah, oh, totally. I think this drainage pipe is meant for like landscaping, like in your yard. I don't know. It's pretty rigid because it's corrugated, but something tells me that if you put 11 feet of backfill on it, it's not going to hold. Good not to risk it. Well, four inch PVC, if you drive, I think you can drive a truck on that because it's rated at like 2,500 PSI. There's no way you're going to drive a truck over this stuff. Time to go back where you came from, little drain pipe. We did a little bit of research at the hardware store about perforated drain pipe. We're gonna do some note taking and designing on that drainage system. So Alyssa is going to help me. She's gonna be working on getting these membranes fixed in this corner. This membrane was so gapped right here that this is what it, a relief cut looks like. So she's gonna be creating a new, mem new membrane that comes down here and then a membrane that comes across each side, basically healing this entire corner. And then we've got a couple other corners that need to be done also. At that point, we'll kind of reassess. We may be ready to put in our filter fabric and some drain rock in preparation for our drain pipe tomorrow. In this corner, I'm gonna do what you recommended, which okay. is apply these lower patches first. Yep. So this patch is going to hug and lap over here, rolls down. It's a very small relief cut there, seals over the edge of the footing there, and looks like I need to make a small relief cut here. Tuck this over the edge of the footing, and then this will seal over hmm. that. That's beautiful. I'm tempted to do one coming the other way. I don't think it's necessary. Like, but I feel it. like, yeah, I feel like if I put this corner piece on now, mm -hmm. it'll have six inches of overlap on each side. So let's try that. Let's check this corner to see where we're at. This one definitely needs some TLC. I feel like this is going really well, like the patching thing. At first it sounds like Tacky. plan B, like we're making it work. But I think, well, first of all, Polyguard makes patches. Um, but I think it's just strips of this that you're supposed to use, you know, a certain amount or whatever. So I feel like these corners are really going well. I don't, I don't feel like this is a afterthought type strategy. It's nice having an upper line to target. I can see now that if we, I mean, we already did this on the continuing pieces, but if you just basically bring this stuff to the corner and then, you know, patch your corners, it creates such a better finish than if you try to wrap an entire sheet around the corner.
we think we're about ready to go ahead and lay our filter fabric and our drain tile. Except since we don't have uh, the pipe we're gonna use, we have to go probably gonna price shop a little bit, see where we can get that tomorrow. And we really don't see any benefit to laying the filter fabric tonight. I don't know, it's a lot of work when we can't do the rest of the stuff and what if it blows away? So I'm just gonna go ahead and clear out some of this rock just to make sure that we're good to go tomorrow. What you working on? Zip tying the second row to the first row. Oh, nice, vertically. Yep. We need to put an angled piece of rebar in the top of this row. And then we'll put another piece of rebar in this row. Yep. And then those that row that we added last night yep. there needs rebar. Um, if you want to patiently cut that um, corner block over there, the one that's extended too far out, see how far it needs to extend. Yep. It should be as far as that one. Yeah, and then if you want to work on cutting this piece. I'll get the rebar for this and then you can put the, the yep. buttress piece on. Good. Uh, I forgot to tell you what I was planning on doing here. So because this peg is so far out, yep. I think we should bring this buttress out yep. maybe six inches, okay. um, something like this. So we'll save pieces that have the tongue and groove and uh, a butt joint there and we'll strap around the end of that whole buttress. It'll be a little longer than it's engineered at. It's engineered yep. at four feet, but yep, it'll give us that that final dowel, yep. which will help just that much more. I don't think there's anything that would keep us from stacking this row out to the corner too. So I guess there's plenty to keep us busy this evening. call them the T's. T bracket. T brackets have little nubbins that stick up and while you can force the ICF down you can also just take a screw and whittle out where the brackets go and I found that works really well. Look at Alyssa being a tool maker. Look at me being ingenuitive. And you pull up gently on that end there. You know what I foresee happening right here? When the kids are bad, this is the corner they're gonna go. Corner? It could be. It's gonna be a cold corner too. It's all concrete. This will probably be where the like height charts are. Yeah. And on this wall. <laughs> yeah. dinner time yet. <laughs> I feel like we have our own castle. Like when I drew castles as like, you know, an eight year old or whatever, I always drew these things on them. Were those ICF castles? That was probably <laughs> like, what's that called? Like a premonition Pre or something? Premonition, yeah. <laughs> Should be a line there. Good. Good. 
So before you put that in there, this tongue has to get you're gonna have to trim this tongue. one tongue, okay? How's she looking? It's amazing once you get a little system down in your head how smooth this goes. Like at first, cutting the seams is really intimidating. Mm -hmm. But after you do a couple, you're like, oh, I got this. Yeah, I think it looks good. Hold on. What's up? <laughs> you wanna come into my foam house? It's super strong. <laughs> it's made of strong stuff. Well, somehow, after a long day of seemingly low productivity, Alyssa and I have managed to put out Three solid hours. Really? That much? Yeah. It's about 8.30. You wrapping up over here? You yeah. Got a few more to go? I think so. This one I don't think we need to, we don't want to tie that down yet. Oh, no. Everything else is tied, so. All right. And tomorrow we're good to make progress. Good job. So row two in the back and row three on the step downs. Yep. It's pretty, it's pretty much good. complete. Starting to take shape. What's really sad is that now we're going to have to start building the bracing. And we're gonna slow right back down. <laughs> That's probably true. So apparently it takes forever to get through the first two rows. You have one row where you're like, you're look like, at us go. Exactly. We're rocking and it's yep. like, never mind, slow back down. Yep. I'm excited though. Yeah. I'm excited as long as we're making forward progress. So now it's getting too dark to work. So what do we do? Get on our phones. <laughs> it's time for research because research can be done in the wee hours, the twilight hours. Yep. So we've got to cost out some of the drain pipe for tomorrow and get a plan in place for that because that will be the bottleneck tomorrow. It's what's keeping us from stacking more block. Yeah. We can't Hopefully go. we can pick that up around 8 a.m. or something. Yeah, or as soon as we can call and get a cost. Yep. Because we have to go back through this, um, we've had a few costs that were not budgeted and it's starting to add up. So I'm becoming more price sensitive. <laughs> so. Yep. We'll do some internet research tonight to try to narrow down the big box stores and then we'll call locals tomorrow, try to get some costs and hopefully we can get drain pipe in the morning. Yeah, that'd be really awesome. And we're thinking about trying to put in a good day's work tomorrow. Yep, we've got, we Yeah, we've got some good friends who are camping this weekend. Those dirty dogs. I know. Why do they got it? Why do people got to go camping when we're building a house? And they're going somewhere beautiful. Yeah, they're going somewhere really nice and relaxing and cool, not hot, not dusty. And there's water. And there's water and friendly people and food. Yeah. <sighs> All right, back to research. <laughs>